RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed the Phil Harris Alice Fay Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Anne Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Phil Foreman. Tonight, the sponsor, Mr. Scott, buys a beautiful Christmas present for his wife, but makes the mistake of leaving it at the Harris home for safekeeping. More about that later, but first, a word from RCA Victor. For a Christmas present the whole family will enjoy... Give the gift that keeps on giving, a new RCA Victor television superset. A superset like the 17-inch Preston, for example, makes a wonderful Christmas gift. It brings a world of entertainment into your home all year round. And it brings into your home the clearest, strongest pictures you've ever seen. That's because the Preston has a completely new circuit system and an electronic supercharger that gives you television with picture power. In the city, in the country, in almost any television area, you get the finest reception possible thanks to picture power. So remember the name Preston, RCA Victor's smartest 17-inch table model superset, available with a matching consulate base at modest extra cost. And make your Christmas present the Preston. It's a magnificent new superset made by RCA Victor, cornerstone of home entertainment for three generations. <laughs> And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> With Christmas two weeks away, Phil has decided not to wait until the last minute to do his shopping. He's now making up his list, and Frankie is helping him. Now, let's see. I guess I got everybody down that I have to give presents to. Curly, didn't you forget somebody? <laughs> oh, I'll give you a hint. This fellow is a prince of a chap. <laughs> He's your best friend and he plays the guitar. Oh, yeah, Remley, thanks for reminding me. I'd hate myself if I forgot Burl Ives. <laughs> Curly? Don't you know another guitar player? Sure, I know Perry Bodkin, Dave Barber, Les Paul I'm, I'm talking about me Oh, you? Oh, I was just counting the ones who use string <laughs> <laughs> Nah, I'm only kidding you, Remley uh, What do you want for Christmas? I don't know, but look, Curly, I want you to take it easy I know you have no regard for money You have a big, generous heart You probably go out and spend a fortune on a gift that I won't need Yeah yeah <laughs> Silly spending a fortune on something that you won't need So so I'll tell you what What? I'll give you the two dollars and you can buy your own gift Ah, <laughs> uh, Curly, I know you're joking You couldn't spend that little on a present for me After all, you're a big man You couldn't afford to have Mr. Schmidt think you're a cheapskate <laughs> Who's Mr. Schmidt? He owns the pawn shop where I'm gonna hock it <laughs> Remley, every year you hock the gift I'm going to give you This year I'm going to give your gift directly to Mr. Schmidt Why do that? It cuts out the middleman <laughs> And saves you car fare Hey, you know something I almost forgot? Gee whiz, I got to put Mr. Scott's name down Why do you have to get Scotty something? Because he's my sponsor I got to keep in good with him Now let me see I wonder what I could send my sponsor that would, that would make him happy Tear up your contract and mail him the pieces <laughs> No, that's what he sent me last year <laughs> Took me two weeks to glue the pieces together <laughs> Oh, well, I'll think of something for him You know something, Remley? Mm. My real problem is what to get for Alice Why do you have to get her anything? Why? Because she's my wife I'm married to her I've been living with her for ten years And I... You're right, I've done enough for her already <laughs> Nah, she's a good kid You know, I want to get her something nice Something different Something that, that she wouldn't go out and buy for herself What's she interested in? Well, she's a sports fan She's crazy about football How about a set of goalposts? <laughs> 
<laughs> Remley, please. Huh? But something in the something in the sporting line would be good. How about a moose call horn? <laughs> Frankie, if you can't make a sensible suggestion, just don't say nothing, huh? I want to get her something for a sport that she participates in. Mm -hmm. Hey, wait a minute. She does a lot of swimming. I'll get her a frogman suit. <laughs> What's a frogman suit? Well, it consists of goggles, fins, and a snorkel tube. <laughs> hey, it's great for swimming underwater. I wonder if she'd like it. Well, she'd be a fool not to. <laughs> Think of all the fun she'll have blowing up enemy battleships. <laughs> Curly, why don't you get her something Phil, that... Phil, Phil, I want to talk to you a minute. Quiet, Remley. Here she comes. Yep. Oh, Phil, I wanted to ask you about that... Say, what's that list you have there? Oh, that's my Christmas list. Oh? How's it coming? Well, I got a problem on, on one gift... Are you having trouble finding a gift for your favorite blonde? No, I'm getting her a mink coat. You're the one I'm having trouble with. <laughs> <laughs> you snapped at that like a rainbow trout, didn't you? <laughs> Honey, you know you're the only woman in my life. You're at the top of my list, and I'm going to get you something real good. Oh, Phil, you really don't have to get me anything. After all, I have you, dear. And that's enough for any woman. I see what you mean. <laughs> I'll cross your name off the list, and then Drop I... Drop that pen. <laughs> Alice, please, you're twisting my conducting wrist. So, by the way, do you have Mr. and Mrs. Scott's names on your list? I got his name down, but why do we have to get something for her, too? She's so hard to please. She's been spoiled. Yeah, she's an old fuss budget. She never likes anything. Oh, now, that's not true. Mrs. Scott is a very nice person. Hey, I got an idea, Curly. Why don't you pick a fight with Mr. Scott? Then you won't have to buy him anything. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Frankie. I can't pick a fight with a sponsor. A sponsor in radio is something that's sacred. Like a white elephant in India. <laughs> Besides, Scotty's a pretty nice... Uh-oh, I'll get it. Oh, hello, Harris. Well, Mr. Scott, come on in, sir. It's a pleasure to see you, sir. Well, thank you. Hello, Mr. Scott. How do you do, Mrs. Harris? Hiya, Scotty. Hi. I'm here, too. Well, this is a disgusting surprise. <laughs> Quiet, Jumbo, or I won't give you any peanuts. You know, this is a coincidence, Scotty. Curly was just talking about your wife. Oh, something nice, I hope. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> Pay no attention to him, Mr. Scott. I said some very nice things about Mrs. Scott, and you know it, Frankie. All right, you said nice things. If somebody said it about my wife, I'd punch him right in the nose. Wait a minute. Mr. Scott, don't believe him. Alice and I were talking about your wife, oh, and never I... Never mind, never mind, Harris. If anybody said anything nasty about my wife, I know whose rum-soaked lips it came from. <laughs> Curly, now he's saying something nasty about your wife. <laughs> I didn't mean Mrs. Harris. Rimley, what are you trying to do? Curly suggested that I start a fight between you and him so he wouldn't have to buy you a Christmas present. I didn't say that. That was your idea. I know I heard it someplace. <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs. Harris, I came over to see you. I'd like to talk to you alone. Well, what about? Well, uh, um, first, couldn't you send these two out to the dog run? <laughs> Well, the house doesn't have to fall on us We'll leave you two alone Come on, Remley Okay Hey, Curly Aren't you taking an awful chance Leaving your wife alone with him? He's a hundred years old <laughs> uh, What did you want to talk to me about, Mr. Scott? Well, I want you to do me a favor yes. I bought my wife a beautiful antique clock for Christmas And I'd like to leave it here until Christmas Eve If I take it home, she'll find it She's, uh, shall we say... A little on the nosy side <laughs> Oh, an antique clock sounds like a lovely gift Oh, it is It's exquisitely designed and has a beautiful chime Now, Mrs. Harris, I want you to do me another favor I want to keep it a secret So don't tell your husband what's in this package 
Old blabbermouth will have it all over town. Now, don't worry. I'll keep it a secret. I'll hide it. Ah, and another thing. Be careful how you handle it. It's very expensive. Now, don't you worry, Mr. Scott. I'll put it away safely. Thank you. I'll pick it up Christmas Eve. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, let's see. I have to put this someplace where Phil won't find it, and I... Hey, Alice, did Scotty leave yet? Yes, he did. Oh, good. Hey, what's that package you're trying to hide? Well, I wasn't supposed to tell you, but it's a Christmas present Mr. Scott bought for his wife. He wants me to keep it for him. What is it? What is it? I promised I wouldn't tell. Oh, you can tell us. What is it, Alice? Yeah, what did he buy for her? Sorry, but I won't tell. Curly, let's beat it out of her. <laughs> Will you stop, Remley? She doesn't want to tell us, she don't have to. I don't care. Well, I'm glad you feel that way about it, Phil. Do me a favor and put it away in my closet and be careful with okay, it. Okay, okay, we'll put it now, away. If you'll excuse me, I have work to do. Well, I better put this package away. Aren't you going to open it and see what's in it? Of course not, Frankie. It's none of my business what Scotty's given his wife. I'm not the least bit interested in this odd-shaped package that weighs about eight pounds. <laughs> Why don't you shake it? That way maybe you can tell what's in it. Ah, I guess it won't do any harm to shake it. <laughs> what a dull gift that don't even gurgle. <laughs> you don't know how to shake. Give it to me. Curly? You hear that? Hey, Remley, it's ticking. How do you like that, Scotty? Giving his wife a time bomb for Christmas. <laughs> Think we ought to call the cops? No. If Mr. Scott wants to blow up his wife so he can marry his secretary, it's none of our business. <laughs> you think it'll lift her very high, Remley? <laughs> Doubt it. Might budge her a little. You can't. Hey. Hmm? Stop ticking. Good. Now we can take a peek. No. And... Hmm? Remley, that wouldn't be right. It's Mr. Scott's present to his wife, and it's none of our business. A gift for somebody else is a sacred thing. You're right. Let's open it, see how sacred it is. <laughs> well, if we don't open it, some busybody might come along and put his finger under this flimsy string and snap it like <laughs> this. <laughs> Cheap twine. Yeah. <laughs> Snapped at my touch. Remley, how could you? Next thing I know, you'll be grabbing the paper and tearing it off like this. They ain't making that tissue paper like they used to. <laughs> hey. Hey, look here. Hmm? It's a clock. You mean we went to all that trouble just to find this? Why would he give his wife a gift like this? I don't know. Maybe she's running at Santa Anita and he wants to clock her. <laughs> Gee, it's a pretty thing. Yeah. I wonder what that little lever on the side is for. I'll pull it out and see. Those are pretty chimes. Yeah, yeah, Remley, but shut that thing off. If Alice finds out that we opened this, she'll murder me. Yeah, okay. I hope Alice didn't hear... Phil! Phil, what were those bells? Phil Harris, who opened Mr. Scott's package? Nobody... O now, however did that get open? I think when you ripped the paper off, it helped a little. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Now, wrap it up again and... Oh, gee, what a gorgeous clock. You like it? Oh, I love it. I wish I had one like it. Okay, honey, when Santa Anita opens, I'll get you one. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you rewrap this. I'll be back later to put it away. And be careful how you handle it. Okay, honey, yeah, I'll be careful. Hey, Remley, hmm? that solves my Christmas present for Alice. She said she'd like a clock like this, so I'll get her one. Can't cost much. <laughs> Lift it up, Curly. Maybe there's a price tag on the bottom. Okay. Hey, yeah. Here's the price tag. It costs twelve hundred dollars, and the twelve hundred. Here, let me take this thing quick. I don't want to. Don't hold hand it to me, Curly. I haven't I got don't it. Want it either. <laughs> oh no, we dropped it. They got a lot of nerve asking twelve hundred for a pile of junk like that. 
Bramley, please, look what we did. Don't get excited. Maybe it isn't as bad as we think. Let me see. How bad is it, Bramley? Oh, that's not bad at all. The glass broke and a little screw fell out. Well, thank goodness. Let's take it to a jeweler fast and have it fixed. But we got to keep it a secret. If we don't, oh, some... Oh, Bill! Uh-oh, Boston Blackie. <laughs> Bill, Mr. Scott just called. His wife found out about the clock, and they're coming over in a little while to get it. Tell him to bring a shovel. Why? <laughs> the clock will all be wrapped for him, honey. Now, look, I'm in real trouble. We got it... We, we ain't even got time to take it to a jeweler to have it fixed. Uh, why do we have to take it to a jeweler? What do you mean? <laughs> Silly boy. All we have to do is take the glass out of your mantel clock and replace this little screw. Yeah. That ought to put us in business. Well, let's get started. Hey, I got an idea, Curly. While we're working on the clock, why don't you sing? What for? To cover up the noise of the hammering. Oh, oh. <laughs> Street of dreams. There I heard a crazy band. That was where the blues began. There was Memphis Joe with his hidey home on and on his saxophone. There was Slip on Slim, you've heard of him, and he's laughing slide from bone. Peg Leg Pete playing hot and sweet on the bacon pot of can. Dancers swayed as they played, that was where the blues began. There was Dog Face Jet with his clarinet hitting high notes up and down. Smokey Moke was there with his slick black hair beating his drums like a clown. While the bugger 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 of a big brown jug by a hip cat dress and jeans, that was where the blues was born in New Orleans. Peg Leg Pete and his violin made of bacon pot of tin. Hollers out, let them folks come in. Dog face Chet and his clarinet, the cutest pair I've ever met. Broke his reader, I'd been there yet. Memphis Joe and his saxophone, Slip Horn Slim and his trombone. They tuned up and settled down, then they all went to town. There was Big Nose Tess from the Greasy Vest weaving in her glass of beer. There was Gambler Jake playing table stakes with a seaboat engineer. Natchez Lil, she was dressed to kill, singing love songs about a man. As she moaned, them people groaned, that was how torch songs began. Then the cat named Sam in from Alabama started shooting up the floor. Everybody broke through the pistol smoke with the windows and the dough. While the roar, roar, roar of a 44 busted up those happy scenes. That was where the blues was born in New Orleans. I guess we're finished fixing the clock, Curly. What do we do now? Let's take it to a jeweler. <laughs> Step aside, Remley, while I put it in this box. <laughs> Curly, you're sweeping up the wrong pieces. Those are the pieces from your mantel clock. <laughs> Remley, why did we take the mantel clock apart? <laughs> we needed a mainspring for Scotty's clock. Oh, yeah. One thing is still puzzles me. What's that? Tell me again. Why did we have to take the television set apart, too? <laughs> we needed a small screw to fit the clock. Oh, well, as long as we had a reason. Then. Look, Remley, we're in trouble. We got to get this fixed before Scotty gets here. We'll fix it. It just takes time. This is a fine mechanism. Needs delicate handling. First thing we got to do is pry open this little teeny lid here. Hand me the tire iron. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather have a crowbar? I would suggest an acetylene torch. Bro! <laughs> what are you guys doing? Well, we're trying to force something open and we don't know how to do it. Well, you have come to the right boy. <laughs> hey, I use this. What is it? Pine of nitroglycerin. Grogan, what are you doing with nitroglycerin? Are you planning to... Of course not. 
I bought that for my mother for Christmas. <laughs> Old lady's gonna get a big bang out of this. <laughs> hey, hey, what, what are all them parts you got on the table? Them springs and the cogs and the gears there. What are they? Oh, these are parts that belong to my boss's wife. <laughs> What does he do, wind her up every day? <laughs> Rogan, this is a clock that he got her for Christmas. We took it apart and we can't get it back together again. Clumsy oafs. <laughs> Step aside, I'll have this thing fixed in no time. Look, Rogan, I'd rather you wouldn't touch it. You see, it, it's an expensive clock. Just give it to me, I want get it. Get your unregistered fingerprints off of this thing. <laughs> now, just sit down and watch your master at work. Well, I'll be darned, Remley He fixed it Listen to it go <laughs> Sounds good, but what's its hurry? <laughs> it's running a little fast, ain't it, Grove? Main thing is it's gone <laughs> uh, Just look at them hands going around <laughs> Two o'clock Five to two <laughs> Ten to two <laughs> Quarter to two. Brogan, you got it running backwards. So what? It's going so fast, nobody will notice it. <laughs> hey, hey, Harris, I better run along. It's getting oily. <laughs> Oh, Remley, what am I going to do? I can't give that clock to Scotty in this condition. Hey, I got an idea. Let's sell this clock to somebody, get the money, and buy another one. Oh, fine, fine, sell it. Where are you going to find someone to buy a clock that runs backwards? That's our only problem. Who would buy a clock that runs backwards? Hi, everybody, I'm from the groceries. A, a backward, backward child. <laughs> hey, Julius, come here a minute. What do you want? I'm busy, I... <laughs> Which one of you guys got a loose liver? <laughs> Don't be a wise guy, it's a clock Speedy little thing, ain't it? <laughs> Look, you can slow it down, kid How would you like to buy this for your mother for Christmas? Well, I might, it's a nice looking clock I... Wait a minute, it's running backwards Only because you're looking at it from a bad angle <laughs> You're standing on your feet you stood on your head, it'd run forward. <laughs> your mother would really appreciate this. No doubt. Hardly a day goes by that Mom don't stand on her head to look at the time. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys trying to palm off on me? Where'd you get a clock that runs backwards? Well, something went wrong with it, and we repaired it, and when we got it finished, it was going backwards. What'd you do, oil it with seratin? Now, wait a minute. <laughs> You'll buy it, though, huh, kid? Oh, your little brain is going backwards faster than that clock. <laughs> I ain't gonna buy it, but I'll tell you what, Mr. Harris. I will help you fix it. Can you? Nothing to it. Step aside and let me out it. I'll fix it in no time at all. Hey, Remley, has got it working. <laughs> going forward now. Yeah. Got the chimes going, too. Julius, you're a genius. Oh, it's nothing any other red-blooded American grocery boy couldn't do. <laughs> What's the matter, kid? Something got caught in my throat. <laughs> but I fixed your clock, huh? Yeah, now I can give it back to Scotty and everything. Hey, Frankie, turn them chimes off. Yeah, okay. Curly, I can't turn them off. The lever ain't here. 
Well, what happened? Where can it be? Where could the lever disappear to? So that's what's caught in my throat. Oh, no. <laughs> Wait a minute. How could that lever get caught in your throat? <laughs> Not again. <laughs> you gotta get that lever back. Yeah, don't worry, Curly. I'll get it. I'll just... Get your guitar plunking fingers out of my mouth. <laughs> Tell me, there must be some way we can stop this thing. Which one? <laughs> Phil, Phil, I want to talk to you about... Oh, yeah, I know the clock, but don't get excited, honey. We didn't wrap it yet because... You don't have to wrap it. Mrs. Scott called again, and his wife doesn't want an antique clock. She doesn't? Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, yes, isn't it? And as long as she doesn't want it, I bought it from Mr. Scott. Oh, you won't. <laughs> but, Alice, you shouldn't have spent $1,200 on a clock. Oh, I'm not spending it. You're going to buy it for me from Christmas. Oh, you darling, you. Yeah, ain't I? Hey, Phil. Huh? Phil, what's that bell ringing? What bell? <laughs> Oh, 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 the bell. That's just a streetcar going through the living room. <laughs> Thanks, from the clock. Oh, aren't they pretty? Oh, you like them, huh? Oh, I love them. Well, I'm glad you do. You're going to hear an awful lot of them from now. <laughs> Alice and Phil will be back in just a moment. Here's a word from RCA Victor. If you think back just three years, you'll recognize the tremendous strides television has made in bringing us finer entertainment. Keeping pace with these advances is your local radio television serviceman. He's your neighborhood community servant whose job it has been to keep his knowledge and equipment up to date in order to provide you with prompt, dependable service. If your radio or television set develops trouble, your radio television serviceman will recommend the right parts and tubes to restore it to top performance standards. For example, if you should need a new picture tube, regardless of the make of your set, he'll recommend a genuine RCA picture tube. Your repairman knows from experience that an RCA picture tube brings out the best from any set. Yes, with an RCA picture tube, you're sure of enjoying the clearest, sharpest picture your television set has to offer. Today, the National Safety Council for the second consecutive year is bestowing its award of merit on the Harris Fay Show. And here is L.W. Van Aken of the National Safety Council. It is with a great deal of pleasure, Phil and Alice, that I present you with this award of merit for exceptional service to the cause of safety in 1951. You can be sure that the records you made for us last year, used in over 1,000 radio stations across the nation, did their part in saving lives and preventing accident. Thanks and congratulations to you for this outstanding public service. Mr. Van Aken, on behalf of Alice and our whole company, many, many thanks. Good night. <laughs> This program is produced and transcribed by Paul Phillips. Remember, whether you're buying a television set, a radio, a Victrola phonograph, or records, put your faith in the cornerstone of American home entertainment for three generations. RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Theater Guild on the Air stars Brenda Marshall and William Holden in The Lost Weekend, next on NBC.